in the blink of a year A tidal wave of debris Unrelenting and free On my heels and I fear What you're basically doing by viewing art or listening to art is you're listening to a sort of a sequence of choices that somebody was making at that one time. I like to just sort of stare into a blank piece of paper and just start kind of putting things down. And I sort of arrange as it goes, you know what I mean? And sometimes it happens really quickly and then it's really cool on its own really quickly. And then sometimes it takes, I'll like let it dry, and then once it's dry, it takes shape, and I start to see things in the picture. There's art in that wave of debris. Most eyes will see a mess, but good things go less when your sayers can see. I'm uh, sort of lovingly ignorant as to the exacts of what I'm doing. Here's a fun little trick. combined forces. It's not hard for me to let go of the art, but it's what's hard for me is to like sort of um, take them away from each other. <laughs> they, they seem to, to me, like when, I, when I'm showing my art, it seems to make a lot more sense to show them in conjunction with each other, like when this grouping of them happened. There are quite a few stages in the process of making something, whether it's a song or a painting or a drawing or something. And um, the first part of it, looks a little bit like um, sort of wandering around. It's almost like you're digesting all of that stuff and it comes out in bursts of sketches, bursts of words, poetry, pieces of songs, and there's a lot of it. It's sort of like this sort of flood that comes through. That's really that, that moment of inspiration. That feels wonderful. I just know that sort of going over the lines over and over and over again has this sort of hypnotic, uh, blissful effect on me. and it, it ends up becoming like a sort of walking meditation. There's something about using an, an old existing surface to create something new on that's very sort of um, interesting and special to me. As the call, so the echo. I read it somewhere uh, a handful of years ago and I liked the the idea behind that we get back what we put into the world. So the first part of the book is sketchbooks. I write everything down. I just sort of, I'm a compulsive doodle bug, really is what is happening. And it moves into ink and watercolor, um, which is a little bit more of what I was showing you earlier. And these are examples, kind of more elaborate examples of stuff I found in just spilling around red ink. So I was listening to Tom Waits and he found his way into the drawing. I think it's another interesting thing about the Sons of the Sea record is that a lot of my earliest musical influences somehow sort of found their way into the fold. Whether you're writing songs, painting pictures, I think it's really important to be very upfront and clear with your influences and your references. Because not only is it educational for the listener or the watcher or the viewer, um, but it also is, it's honorable. During that time frame of um, the very late 90s, the very sort of end of the 90s into the sort of turnover into the new millennium when Incubus started to 
kind of take off and do really well and things really, really started speeding up. I was afforded less time to work on like fine art things, but I was never without um, a camera or a sketchbook. So I continue to journal and sketchbook and take pictures throughout all of that. I feel like if you do things that um, you love to do and you do them lovingly, it's like you're really, you, how could you be wrong, do you know?